Hello again, it's HP Lamini with part 2 of module 4 as I promised, right? So I still need your book uh, by Kruger, Public Law, N6. So in our continuation, we're proceeding with the classification of courts, right? In terms of section 65, 165 of the Constitution of South Africa, the judicial authority in South Africa is vested in the courts. So please refer to page 27, the judicial authority. You'll see, I'll read it with you. I'll say a few so that uh, you'll understand. It's on, it's, it's, it's on the bottom of page 27, right? This section I'm talking about. The judicial authority of the Republic is vested in the courts. The courts are independent and subject only to the constitution and the law which they must apply impartially and without fear, favor, or prejudice. No person or organ of state may interfere with the functioning of the courts. Organs of state through legislative and other measures must assist and protect the courts to ensure that independence, impartiality, dignity, accessibility and affection, uh, effectiveness of the courts is there. An order or decision issued by a court binds all persons to whom and organs of state to which it applies. The Chief Justice is the head of the judiciary and exercises responsibility over the establishment and monitoring of norms and standards for the exercise of the judicial functions. Who is our Chief Justice? It's Judge Mohueng Mohueng. Okay. On page 28, there's a diagram there which you will see. It's going to assist you when uh, you see the structure of the courts. So now we're dealing with the types of court cases. Courts are divided into lower courts and higher courts. As you know, there are higher courts, uh, lower courts are magistrate courts, higher courts are those in each and every uh, region of South Africa, as well as the Supreme Court of Appeal, which is in Bloemfontein, plus this, uh, the Constitutional Court, which is the Constitutional Court, which is the Supreme Court of all the courts in South Africa. It's in Joburg, right? So courts, the jurisdiction of the courts, let's talk about the jurisdiction of the court. How is it determined, right? Jurisdiction determined by the type of offense is determined by the type of offense and the possible sentence upon conviction. For example, you committed murder, right? If you committed murder, your case would be tried in the regional court or the high court, right? So why? Because you are going to get a very high sentence. But for assault, you will be taken to the magistrate court because the sentence there is minimal. Right? Civil cases, under civil cases, civil cases are identified by the amount of claim, the amount which you're claiming. If you're claiming millions and millions, then it means your case will be tried in higher courts only. But if you claim an amount of 10,000, it will be taken to the, for example, to the, uh, to the small claims court. Okay. So, any issue involving the interpretation, protection, as well as the enforcement of the Constitution must go to the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court has also has got the exclusive jurisdiction in other matters, right? So those matters are disputes between organs of states, the constitutionality of the parliamentary bill or provincial bill, the constitutionality of a parliamentary or provincial act, the constitutionality of any amendment of 
and the certification of provincial constitutions. Those are exclusive matters for the constitutional court and no other court can try those matters, right? So how cases reach the constitutional court? All right, before that, let's go to the, or oh, to section 167, right? Section 167 carries the main functions of the constitutional court. It's section 167, subsection 3, which carries the authority of the, constitu of the constitution. So it's the highest court in all constitutional matters. The constitution decides only constitutional matters and issues connected with decision and constitutional matters, right? Also make the final decision whether a matter is, constitution, is a constitutional matter or whether an issue is just connected with a decision on a constitutional matter. All what you must know is that the constitutional court may not be used as a court of first instance. What I mean by the court of first instance is that there is no matter, there's no matter which would be taken to the constitutional court. Uh, all matters start from the higher courts, that is high court and the Supreme Court, Supreme Court of Appeal. Right? How matters reach the constitutional court now? One, they reach this, this constitutional court as a result of an appeal from a judgment of a high court or a Supreme Court of Appeal, sometimes as a direct application to the court when there's an application, as the result of the court below declaring a piece of legislation invalid, which requires confirmation. For example, in this one, the High Court may find a certain legislation to be unconstitutional, and they will say in their judgment, okay, this, this section is unconstitutional, but it will be sent to the Constitutional Court for confirmation, right? Then let's go to the Supreme Court of Appeal now. The Supreme Court of Appeal, in the past, you remember in that case of Van Breda in Module 1, it was referred to as the Appellate Division, right? After 1994, it's called the Supreme Court of Appeal. It's in Bloemfontein, right? It has the jurisdiction within the whole of South Africa and is the highest court of appeal in the land. It hears appeals from high courts only, not a court of first instance, right? I think I made a mistake in the, in this, in the constitutional court. This is the court of where, there's no, where it's not a court of first instance. The constitutional court, you can make an application direct to the Constitutional Court. But the Supreme Court of Appeal only hears the matters which are being brought from lower courts, right? So in the Supreme Court of Appeal, accused who were found guilty and sentenced by the High Court may appeal within 14 days after the passing of sentence. So the functions of the, the Supreme Court of Appeal. They hear criminal as well as civil cases. Those are appeals, and they maintain the appeal. They also deliver verdicts on what should have been, on what should have been in the, in the, in, 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 in the, in the lower court before it was transferred, before the case was transferred to them. For example, I just want to give an example. There's a, there's a case of uh, Oscar Pistorius who made at uh, River Steen Camp. That matter was taken to the Supreme Court of Appeal after he was sentenced to six years. And the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, changed that, uh, altered that uh, 
sentence by sending, sending it back to the high court to judge Masipa to change the sentence because uh, six years was too small. Then she had to change the sentence to, I can't remember, it's 10 or 15 years, right? So the Supreme Court of Appeal also decide appeals on constitutional matters, except on matters over which the Constitutional Court has exclusive jurisdiction, right? All those matters, you'll see them on page 29, right? Supreme Court, Supreme Court of Appeal also declare an act of parliament or provincial act or the conduct of the president of South Africa unconstitutional. They may do that. But such an order has to be confirmed by the constitutional court. So in other words, they, they, they will give the judgment, but they, they will need confirmation first from the constitutional court just to confirm that uh, it is unconstitutional. So appeal may be upheld or may be dismissed. And the head of this court is referred to as judge president of the Supreme Court. So let's go to the higher courts now. The higher courts, you'll remember that higher courts are lower than the Supreme Court of Appeal. We started with the Constitutional Court, which is the Supreme Court of the land, the highest court of the land. Then we came uh, below it, it's the Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal. And now we're doing the High Courts, which, which is below the Supreme Court of Appeal. So the High Courts, pre the, previously they were known as the Supreme Court themselves but now they are high courts. They are in all provinces, right? So they are headed by judge presidents. Each and every court in, say, Bishaw, Grahamstown, Port Elizabeth, Cape Town, Devon, Pretoria, everywhere, they've got their own judge president, right? So they deal with serious cases. Serious cases would be your murder, your treason, your rape, your I mean there are so many, etc., etc. Right? Uh, they also deal with the civil claims, civil claims of high amounts, very high amounts. They, those cases are dealt with in the high court. High court also deal with cases concerning the status, for example, the presumption of death. What is meant by the presumption of death? The presumption of death, for example, mean, uh, take for example, one of your relatives went missing, it became a vagrant, a vagrant somewhere else, and uh, when, he, when he could not be found, and there are some other things you had to do regarding his name or his assets or whatever within the family. You may make, you can make an application in the high court just to presume that person is dead so that you can get a death certificate and do all the, necess all, all the necessities, right? So the high court can also decide on constitutional matters except those of exclusive jurisdiction by the Constitutional Court. They also review and hear appeals from the lower courts, that is, from the magistrate courts, right? There are 14 provincial divisions. You, you can see them on page 31 in your book, right? Still on higher courts, there are also special higher courts. Special higher courts we refer to Labor Court and Labor Appeal Court, right? They are established in terms of the Labor Relations Act, 66 of 1966. We also have uh, a special income tax uh, court. It's all, it also carries a status of a high court. Though the people who preside there are judges, right? The judge of the high court must be assisted by the accountant the accountant of not less than 10 years experience 
and a representative uh, from the commercial community, right? There's also a land claim court. Land claims court, there's also, uh, yeah, under land claims court, I think I must say something about the land claim court. The land claims court specializes on the restoration of original land. For example, all those uh, who were dispossessed of their land in terms of racial discrimination after 19 June 1913, they may approach this court to claim their land. So the Land Claims Court also provides an alternative state land or award a compensation instead. Okay? Let's go to the lower courts now. The lower courts, we've got Water Tribunal or Water Court. That jurisdiction is in all the provinces of South Africa, right? We also have the Divorce Court. Previously, the Divorce Courts were in the High Courts only, but now they are also in uh, Regional Courts, right? because of the concurrent jurisdiction uh, with, with the High Court. They've got the concurrent jurisdiction with the High Courts. So that is why now they are being dealt with in, in regional uh, courts. There's, we also have an Equality Court, right? Equality Court deals with the things like gender, race, pregnancy, marital, it's based on, on the Constitution. You see the, there's an equality clause, section 9 of the Constitution in the Bill of Rights. So all those things written there are dealt with in this court, the Equality Court. Okay? We also have the Chiefs and the Headman Court, the chiefs and the headmen courts are more traditional, right? They are for the chiefs and the headmen. And if you are not happy about the decision of uh, the chief's court, you can make an appeal to the magistrate court, okay? Right? We also have regional courts. Regional courts are not high courts, but they can also try the cases which are tried in the High Court, except only for treason. High treason, you cannot try, they cannot try that case in the, in the original court. The magistrate court, magistrate courts are lower court and court of first instance. By first instance, I said, I said it's where cases start, the court where cases start. Right? Those are magistrate court. Within the magistrate court, there's a regional court, which is a bit higher than the magistrate court because of the sentences and the type of cases which are tried in the regional court. Uh, they deal with serious offenses only. With serious offenses, I mean murder, I mean rape. I mean, armed robberies with extenuating circumstances, etc., etc., right? Then you also have the courts referred to as ordinary magistrate courts, right? These deal with less serious criminal and civil matters, right? There's no jurisdiction to try murder or treason in these courts. We also have the small claims court, right? The Small Claims Court is an alternative which was made by the government because this is where all the claims of an amount of 20,000 are done. But in your books, you'll see it's 15,000, right? Excuse me. In your books, it's 15,000. But things changed from April last year. By that time, your book 
was already published, okay? So the presiding officers in those courts are commissioners. The commissioners, they just take, uh, it's a volunteer work of uh, the local advocates and the local attorneys who assist in the small claims court free of charge, right? So matters excluded from the jurisdiction of the small claims court are also written on page 35. You'll find them on page 35. So everything about the small claims court as to what to claim, it's on page 35. The repayment of monies, land, deliver of movable action against an occupier of property and all that, actions arising from liquid documents of up to 20,000, a credit agreement, and all those are very, very important because uh, sooner or later you'll be utilizing the small claims court yourselves. Children's court. Children's court are courts Okay, let me just give you a small history. Previously, when the young offenders were arrested, they were taken into the cells with the elderly people, and uh, it was not constitutional, right? Then the government, especially from 1994, government decided that the children are not supposed to be staying with uh, the older elder people, older people in the cells, they can't they can't spend time with those people because they are still young, and uh, there are so many things which will go wrong in their minds, right? Then there's an act, uh, which uh, which was promulgated in terms of uh, the children, so it's called the Children's Court Act. Children's Court Act 38 of 2005, right? And the Child Justice Act, the one I was referring to, I was not referring to the Children's Court. I'm sorry about that. I was referring to the Child Justice Act of 2008. It's Child Justice Act 75 of 2008, which aims to set up the child justice system for children under the age of 18. The Children's Court Act 38 of 2005 is an older act. Okay? So all children under the age of 10 years who does not have criminal capacity in terms of this act. Okay? You'll read about that on page 36. Right? There's also a sexual offenses court. Oh, the maintenance, let's start with the maintenance court. There's a maintenance court which is situated within the magistrate court and uh, parents of children are, are legally liable to maintain their children and they go to this court. If there's one of the parents who does not want to maintain the kids, you must approach this court, the maintenance court, which I think most of us are familiar with, right? And uh, there's also the sexual offenses court. Sexual Offences Court, uh, you will find it all over South Africa, right? And uh, some regional courts, recently some regional courts, some other regional courts were upgraded into Sexual Offences uh, Courts because we did, we did not have these courts uh, previously. It was just the special court, special sexual offenses court. But now we do have the courts, which deals precisely with sexual uh, offenses, which is self-explanatory, right? You'll find, we'll also find that on page 37 as to what is it all about, right? So for now, I think I gave you the first one which was part one, this is the end of part two. So this is module four. So we'll meet, I'll meet you again in module five. Thank you.
Stay safe.